In today's video, we'll be going over aromatic compounds, what makes them aromatic, anti-aromatic, or um, not aromatic at all, and typically in your college courses or in the textbooks, they'll give you this equation here, 4n plus 2. This is called Huckel or Huckel's rule, whatever you want to call it. It, it doesn't matter. Um, this is very important. This is what tells you whether a compound is aromatic, non-aromatic, or anti-aromatic. However, there's another way about going this. It takes some memorization. It's a quite a easier way to figure out if something is aromatic or not. So, let's see. Well, let's just. I'm, I mean, I'm crossing it out. I don't want you guys to forget that. But th here's just another way of uh, going about it. Okay. So. aromatic for a compound to be aromatic it must be cyclic planar and I'll go over throughout the video I'll go over uh, cyclic planar and uh, all these different points okay and when I say planar by the way I mean that it's sp2 hybridized okay three very important actually this, this is uh this is the kind of the most important and it can quickly tell if it's aromatic or not it must be conjugated now what does that mean conjugation is it's this alternation there's this altering of single bonds and multiple uh, multiple bonds and the reason for conjugation is it lowers the overall energy of a compound and it increases its st uh, stability that's why oftentimes you'll hear about how benzene is very very stable and that is because it is conjugated these electrons can delocalize this is something that is conjugated this benzene ring it is conjugated it's cyclic it's planar of all these electrons that overlap it sits on a plane it's planar okay and as far as it being planar and being sp2 hybridized there's a you have to assume that their H is there because a lot of times in the class in your classes in organic chemistry they're not gonna they shorthand everything they're not gonna let you know that there's hydrogens there they assume that you know all this stuff and they just want you to fail <laughs> so sp sp2 hybridized sp2 hybridized sp2 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 and sp2 you have conjugation going on here and it is planar and it is cyclic so okay now what are some other things there's this little chart that I have going on here and what you can do is count out the pi electrons and that could tell you whether it's aromatic or not after you went through that checklist is it cyclic is it planar and is it conjugated after that, this is where the 4n, 4n plus 2 rule comes in, kind of, but take a look at this chart. And notice how it goes intervals of 4. That's aromatic, non-aromatic. I'm going to put non-A for here just for some space. Non-aromatic. I mean, I'm sorry. Let me go back on that. This would be anti aromatic, actually. Oh, 
Oh wow. Big, 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 big mistake. See, even I get confused sometimes. These numbers that are here, the numbers that are here are actually for compounds that are anti-aromatic. An aromatic would be here. And then for non aromatic, non A, usually they're odd numbers. And you'll see what I'm talking about when I say that they're um, odd numbers. Um, usually it'll just be one lone electron or things like that. So take a good look at this chart. And this is really going to help you with figuring out if the compound is aromatic, anti-aromatic, or non-aromatic. Okay? So why don't we look at some examples and we'll see. <clears throat> okay, for this first example, <clears throat> let's see. Now, is this compound aromatic, anti aromatic, or non aromatic? So remember, we, we, we create this little chart that we have here. So let's see for aromatic. We have 2 pi, and remember, they're all going in intervals of 4. So always start off with 2 for aromatic. 10, 14. We don't need to go further than that. So how many pi electrons are there? There's one single bond there, and we know single bonds is 2 electrons in there. So that's 1. That's 2. 2 pi bonds. So if you see here, actually let me make that a different color. Two pi electrons. Two pi electrons. Already we know it's aromatic. But you know, let's let's go through our other checklist. There's two checklists. You have these numbers off to the side. I tell you the pi electrons and then you have is it cyclic yeah is it planar let's see it's H here H there so this is SP Two hybridized, sp2 hybridized, and now look at this uh, cation, this positive here. That goes towards hybridization. So this would be sp sp2 hybridized as well. Therefore, the whole compound is planar. Now, is it conjugated? Yes most certainly is this can go there or it can go there it can delocalize I understand that before I mentioned that there's alternating but in this in this case as long as it can delocalize it's fine it can go around in this uh, in this compound okay so it's cyclic planar conjugated and then it follows our little rule here of two pi electrons okay Let's go to the second one.
Okay. You can choose whichever work. You know what? Let's do the cyclic planar thing first. Let's say, so is it cyclic? Yes. And by the way, um, when asking yourself, is it cyclic? Let me show you something that it wouldn't be cyclic. This is something that wouldn't be cyclic. It's not enclosed. If it was enclosed, that would be considered cyclic. But in, in this compound, however, it's it's not. In cyclic compounds, the, what happens is the p orbitals overlap. You have one there, you have one there, one here, one here, one here, one here. There's no overlap here at all. They're separated. Okay. So next we ask, is it planar? Let's see. Hydrogen there, sp2, 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 sp2. And now you see this negative here. These uh, actually these two lone this this lone pair this contributes to hybridization so this is sp3 as well I mean I'm sorry sp2 as well so is it planar most well, certainly and is it conjugated yes as you can see these can be delocalized where that goes there either either way there's alternating single bonds. One here, then in this middle there's nothing, and then there's a bond there. They're alternating. They're alternating single bonds. Okay? Now, let's see. Now, is it aromatic? How many pi electrons are there? There's two, four, and we'd count these as well, six. Now, what was the numbers for something to be aromatic? It was 2 pi, 6 pi, 10 pi, and 14, and so on. So again, let me redraw this. Actually, we, we can see here. It's 2, 4, and 6. 6 pi electrons. Okay, let me just draw that again just to make it clear. I'll draw it real big. Again, said we had two, four, and six. And our numbers were. Two pi, six pi, ten. I won't go any further than that. Two, four, and then six. Six is the magic number. So what if that wasn't six? If it was another uh, even number and it wasn't two, six, or ten, then it's anti-aromatic, and we'll go into uh, to an example like that. Let's see. Let's do this example. Now, let's do our first checklist. Is it cyclic? Certainly is. It's enclosed. Is it planar? Shoot. Looks like it.
is it conjugated? Definitely looks, I'm sorry, definitely looks conjugated to me. There are alternating single bonds. Doesn't, by the way, it always doesn't have to be uh, single bonds. It can alternate with multiple bonds, double bonds. But for this say, you're mostly going to see single bonds and it is alternating. So definitely, why not, right? Now, let's go to our little chart here, aromatic. And remember, if it isn't any of these numbers, that means it's not aromatic. It can be not aromatic or anti-aromatic. So how many electrons are there? Well, actually, let's do our little chart here first. 2, 6 pi, 10 pi, go to 14. That looks ugly, real bad. OK, this looks better. 14 pi electrons. So now. What do we have? We have two, four, and we have one electron here. So how many pi electrons do we have? How many electrons do we have? We only have five. So since there's five, is that any of the numbers down here? We have two, six, ten, and fourteen. We don't we don't have that number. So it, it, this cannot be aromatic. This compound here cannot be aromatic. Now, remember our little table for anti-aromatic. For anti-aromatic um, compounds, they're even numbers just like the aromatic numbers. However, it would be 4 pi, 8 pi, 12 pi, 16 pi and so on okay and we have five that number isn't there either so it can be anti-aromatic the only thing left is not aromatic it is not aromatic not at all like I said in the beginning for something to be aromatic it must be cyclic plane or conjugated Okay, that's down. Now, we have to look at our little chart here. Does it have 2 pi electrons, 6 pi electrons, 10 pi electrons, 14 pi electrons, 18 pi electrons? And most of the time, they're not going to go past 14 or 18. Does it have that? No, it does not. It has 5 electrons. Now, okay, well, is it anti-aromatic? Anti-aromatic has 4, 8, 12, and 16. So it can't be anti-aromatic. The only thing it can be is not aromatic. Anytime you get an odd number of electrons in a compound, it should be two, four, and then one lone pair like that, five, with radical, it will be not aromatic. Okay? Or there's another scenario, but it doesn't show up as much. If it is not, if there's one thing, if if somewhere in the compound it is not sp2 uh, hybridized, it will be not aromatic. So if you get an odd number of electrons, or there's somewhere in that compound where it isn't planar, meaning it is not sp2 hybridized, then it will be not aromatic. Okay. So let's look at uh let's look at an example. This is an interesting one. Okay. We ask ourselves is it cyclic? Yes. Is it planar? Most certainly. 
Has it conjugated? Psh, looks like it. It's alternating, right? Of alternating single bonds. Now, how many pi electrons does it have? Okay, let's see. Uh, yeah, so aromatic. Aromatic, we have 2 pi, 6 pi, 10 pi, and 14 pi. Now, how many electrons does this compound have? Take a moment, look it over, and we'll figure it out. Now, let's see. Let me just change colors here. We have two, we have four. Now, we are not going to include these two lone pairs, I mean, this lone pair here. You know why? The reason being is it is going to go towards hybridization. So this nitrogen is connected to one, two, and then they'll have this here. So that is sp2 hybridized. Okay. Now, is it aromatic? Say it's like we say it's cyclic, planar, conjugated. It's sp2 hybridized. Everything is sp2 hybridized. Now, does the number of electrons match with any of these numbers? No, it's not two, six, ten, not fourteen. Not at all. Now, is the amount of electrons odd to be anti-aromatic? No. So it has to be not aromatic. It isn't aromatic at all. Let's remember for for it to be not aromatic, it would be four pi, eight pi, and twelve pi electrons. And how much does this have? It has two and four. And remember, we said these uh, this lone pair here goes towards hybridization to make it sp2 so it can be planar. We only have four uh, pi electrons, so it'll be not aromatic. Okay? Looking for another example here. Be interesting. Okay. Guess I'll make something up here. this okay so now we ask is this aromatic anti-aromatic or non-aromatic is this cyclic 
Definitely it's enclosed. Looks like it to me, right? Now, is it planar? Remember what makes a compound planar? It must be sp2 hybridized. This is sp2. This is sp2. This is sp2. However, let's look at this one here. Is that sp2 hybridized? The answer is the answer would be no. It, it isn't. You know, um, after taking organic chemistry one and two, it for organic chemistry one it took me a while because they make they assume you know so many things. There's actually hydrogens here that they don't want to tell you about. <laughs> You know, it, it took me till maybe half the semester of Orgo 1 to figure this out. This is sp3 hybridized. Because there's four different connections to this carbon that's here. This is sp3. And for something to be aromatic, it mu everything must be sp2. Everything, everything. So we don't even have to finish through with this problem. Since it is not sp2 hybridized and it is not planar, it's going to be not aromatic. Not aromatic. And you can easily figure out if something is aromatic, anti-aromatic, just by following if it's cyclic, if it's planar, if it's conjugated, and then after that, you do your 2 pi, your 6 pi, your 10 pi, 14 pi. And if it's not any of those numbers, then it has to be anti-aromatic. And if it's not even, and then you have an odd number, it is, um, it is not aromatic. Okay? It's not aromatic if the electrons are odd or if it's not planar. Okay? And we'll go over one more problem here. And this is kind of like one of those problems where, like, I guess an exception problem. Because in chemistry, they like making exceptions and this extra stuff, you know. You, you guys know how it is. Make a lot of things difficult. Okay. Now... Is this aromatic? <clears throat> well, I can tell you that it is cyclic. I can tell you that it has 10 pi electrons, right? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. And that does go with our little chart that we made where it is, if it's 2 pi, 6 pi, 10 pi, it's aromatic. So, okay, Dre, <laughs> what are you saying? It has to be aromatic, right? It has the 10 pi electrons, it's cyclic, it's conjugated, but... Is it planar? Like, you know, okay, okay, Dre. Everything seems to be, um, you know, sp2 hybridized here. However, there's two hydrogens that are here. And why are these hydrogens important? They are eclipsed. Now, for some odd reason, you follow all these rules and there's just this one little exception. And by the way, this, uh, this compound that I drew out is called anuline, which you might see in your homeworks or test quizzes. It's usually the tricky one. And so this compound would be not aromatic. 
not aromatic whatsoever. And the reason being is because of these two hydrogens there that make it eclipsed. And since they're eclipsed, that makes it not planar. It becomes this sort of, it, it, it's not on a plane anymore. It, it's this thing where it becomes like 3D. It's, it's hard to explain, but it's no longer planar if they are eclipsed like that. So other than that, you just delete this. You guys get a you know good look at this. I'll delete it. Other than that example, always go by your aromatic, which is... 2 pi, 6 pi, 10 pi, 14 pi, 18 pi. Ask yourself, is it cyclic? Is it planar? Is it conjugated? Okay, and preferably I like to do this one first and then go to this one second. If it isn't any of these numbers, it has to be either non-aromatic or anti-aromatic. And if it is anti-aromatic, it would be 4 pi, 8 pi, uh, 12 pi, or 16 pi. And if you're like, oh my god, you know, it's, it's, it's neither of these. I have an odd number of electrons in this compound. Then you know straight up. Is anti aromatic okay and this concludes this video um, those are those are that's all you're gonna see with it it's it's a very simple topic if you just remember these numbers here and then that for that one little exception where you know organic chemistry likes to screw you over and some wise guy says it won't be aromatic if this happens you know and that's that's completely it um, I'll see you guys next video. Please leave a like, subscribe, comment if you have any questions. My email will be in the um, comments. Um, I do I do try to respond. And if you have any you know comments, just comment down below. Okay. Thank you guys. See you next video.